All right, guys. So I've had a couple questions, well, a bunch of questions about the new Colt rifles. And unfortunately, I can't always remember important things that I should remember when I make videos. So what I have, my tablet sitting here, and I have a bunch of the questions written down. And I have a couple things that I want to discuss real quick with these um, rifles. And the first and main thing that I want to talk about, well, the first thing I want to talk about is I have had this an issues. I've had issues with these guns. And I keep forgetting to mention them in the videos because honestly it's not that important. But I guess I should mention them because it is a problem. It's the same problem with both guns. Uh, and the problem is, is Colt is not tightening these pistol grips down. So with this rifle, I shot, I think, 300 rounds the first time I took it out. And the pistol grip was loose. And this rifle, I didn't shoot this with the original pistol grip on it. I took it off before I shot it and I put this on. But when I stuck the tool up in the grip to loosen the bolt, it, it just unscrewed with no force, no nothing. So they're not torquing these pistol grip screws in. So if you get a new Colt rifle, check the pistol grip screw. More than likely, you're going to change the pistol grip anyways. But um, now the screw does have the correct washer on it that has the little teeth on it that are supposed to stick. So it helps the screw not back out. But again, Colt's just not torquing them. And if you're not going to torque it, then the washer does nothing so those are the only issues I've had with these rifles now this one here has had a thousand rounds of steel cased this is the CR6920 up top here and this Colt M4A1 has had 300 rounds through it I've had no malfunctions out of the CR6920 and I've had one issue out of the M4A1 and that was whenever I tried to shoot steel cased and it did not work because this has an H2 buffer in it. And that's going to lead me to my next question that I get a lot is uh, about the buffers. So the CR6920 is going to come with an H1 buffer. They're all going to come that way. And the M4A1 is going to come with an H2 buffer. Again, that is mil-spec TDP. So... Um, <clears throat> Another question that I've gotten a couple times is asking if the Colts M4s, if any of them have mid-length gas systems. They do not. They all have carbine length gas systems. These are military carbines and they were developed with the carbine length gas system. Now that being said, these rifles are gassed 100% correctly and then you add the extra buffer in and the the h1 buffer or the h2 buffer and it's just it it's like shooting a mid-length gas system it's perfectly smooth it ejects the brat or the steel brass case to the four o'clock position uh depending on what ammo sometimes three o'clock but mostly four um you don't need a mid-length gas system in fact i don't think the military uses mid-length gas systems i think some of the maybe socom troops uh, that have the um, Daniel Defense Rifles. I think those are mid-length gas systems. But the standard issue rifle, which is the M4 carbine, is all carbine length gas systems, if you did not know. Uh, one of the main questions that I've gotten and why I wanted to make this video is because um, <clears throat> I keep getting asked about lower and upper fitment and slop. And to be frank i don't know why people are worried about this so you literally have two different pieces of metal and they're only being held on by two pins so of course there's going to be some play now some companies like arrow have a screw down here somewhere and you can adjust it to take some of the slack out between the upper and lower but um, if they're too tight, that can also cause issues. So let's see if I can show you here. So you might be able to hear that. I don't know. But there is, I am flexing it. There is, there is some play there. Um, 
yeah, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to hear that. But you really can't. Hey, you can see it moving a little bit. There you go. Um, it's very little. This is a. These are mil spec guns. These are not commercial guns that are built to the absolute tightest tolerance. These are combat workhorses, and they have some play to them. They're supposed to be that way. This is the M4A1. Has the exact same amount of play in the upper and lower. Again, there's supposed to be play there. So just for comparison, I have um, a PSA rifle. Now the internals are, some of the internals on this rifle upgraded, but uh, the receivers are both PSA. So I don't know if you'll, the camera will pick that up, but you probably hear that. It has about the same. You can really see it there has about the same amount of play again the only thing holding those things together are two pins i really don't know why people think that there's something wrong because there's not <clears throat> now the other thing i want to address is these castle nuts the castle nuts are staked uh and colt doesn't just hand stake them like a lot of companies do, especially some of your budget companies. They they just take like a, a punch and they'll displace the metal. These guns from Colt, there's actually a machine that comes down. I'll put a picture in if you've never seen it. Um, now, I don't know if BCM and, and those companies do that. Uh, they might have a machine that does that. I'm sure they do. But uh, like I said, some of your lower end companies, a lot of your lower end companies, um, they just displace the metal with a punch and that works too but these are done correctly and they're both done two times which is they're supposed to be done twice okay so the last thing i'm going to talk about well yeah the last thing i'm going to talk about here is colt does outsource parts i've talked about this in the other video it's not a problem bcm outsources parts bcm doesn't make their bolt carrier groups they don't make their barrels uh, I, I doubt they, well, they, just, they don't forge their uppers and lowers. They get their parts, they QC them, and they put them together, and they send them out the door. And that's what Colt's doing. Now, they do manufacture some of these parts. I don't know what, but they definitely manufacture some of them. Every modern gun manufacturer outsources parts. It's just the way it is. It's not a problem. The parts are still made to mill spec and they still run 100%. And Colt does a QC testing on them. They don't just get parts and send them out the door. They're, they're checking them. They're testing them like they're supposed to do, just like BCM does. Um, I don't understand why Colt gets so much flack because they don't make... Why doesn't BCM get any of that flack? I really don't understand. It makes no sense. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, a lot of people say that these rifles are overpriced. Now, I don't understand how people can say that because this OEM one is literally on sale right now for $750. I paid $799 for that and that seems to be about the, the usual price for these OEM ones. Now, you can go on my channel and you can watch the unboxing of the OEM one and you can see exactly how it comes. It doesn't come with a buttstock, it doesn't come with a handguard, and it doesn't come with a trigger guard. All that stuff you guys are going to replace anyways. If you're looking for a Colt, I su highly suggest you get the OEM one or the OEM two. I would not spend eleven, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars on a standard CR6920 just because it's at a gun shop or just because it has Magpul furniture on it. You can literally order this for $750. Most of the time it's free shipping. You can buy your $100 Magpul furniture, put it on, and for $850, $900, you can have a great rifle. Now, I'm not sure exactly what all other guns are in that price point of $750 to $800. But I know for a fact the M&P, Smith & Wesson M&P 2 is a $650, $700 rifle. 
and this is much better. This comes with a chrome line barrel that's been magnetically particle inspected. Same with your bolt, it's chrome lined, <clears throat> phosphate coated, all mil spec. This gun has, is a TDP gun. This is as close to mil spec as you can get without going to, yet to FN because they hold the military contracts. Now I understand Colt doesn't hold the military contracts anymore, but they did literally for 50, 60 years. So, I mean, it's up to you. I'm not telling you guys have to buy Colt. Obviously you do whatever you want. I'm just saying Colt is an option and I think you should consider it. Anyways, if you have any other questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them below and make sure you like and subscribe and also share the video with some other people that may be on the fence about Colt. Alright, anyways, have a good day. I'll talk to you guys later.